What are your thoughts on Kentucky becoming more competitive in the East? What are our thoughts about Kentucky being more competitive? Yeah. <laughs> Every game we've had with Kentucky since I've been the head coach at the University of Georgia is extremely competitive and extremely physical. You know, I, I think the job that Mark Stoops has done at University of Kentucky is incredible. Um, every time you get ready to play them, you know defensively they've had one of the best defenses year in and year out. They've put a lot of good defensive players into the uh, NFL draft. And then the offense, they're extremely physical. Uh, tough op opponent to play for. Um, I think every time we've gone there and play, it's come down to the fourth quarter. And we've had some really tough weather games at home with them. So it's not about being more competitive. I think they're extremely competitive. Coach, to your left on the front row. Coach Drew DeArmond, WCZN Radio in Huntsville, Alabama. I wanted to ask you about JT Daniels. You guys brought in Jamie Newman, who was a high-profile transfer. And due to the circumstances last year, he opted out. What was the thought as your, of your staff to bring in JT even when you, when you had Newman? And how much has he grown now that you've had a somewhat normal offseason in a spring practice? Yeah, it, it, was, it was a tough decision because we had Jamie Newman. We felt good about Jamie uh, from the tape we had seen being around Jamie. Jamie was with us for that brief window of uh, offseason workouts before – COVID hit. So we didn't really know because we didn't get to go through spring practice. But when JT went in the portal, we felt like, you know, the way to improve your roster is to make sure that you have all positions covered. We weren't sure what we had at quarterback. And not knowing what we had, even past Jamie being one year, we felt like JT could be the guy after Jamie. And uh, it was a situation where we had a little bit of a quarterback deficit and we were able to improve our roster getting Jamie, getting Stetson, who came back from junior college, and then getting JT on the roster. So I'm excited to see what he can do this year. I think his growth uh, has been more physical than mental, although you're always growing as a quarterback mentally because you get experiences. He's a guy that's played a lot of football between high school, USC, and our place, but he's, he's gotten his knee in better shape. He's gotten uh, more mobile and can move a little bit, and I think he's got a lot more confidence, and uh, he's got a better relationship with the players around him. Coach, to your right on the front row. Hey, Kirby. David Kloniker with the Charleston Post and Courier. Uh, there's been some chatter about maybe moving to a nine-game conference season one year. Uh, what would you think about that? I have no issue with that. I think that's the more that you play really good competition, I think it's a great opportunity for our conference, more exposure, better games. Uh, one of the biggest things that we're heading, that we're going to have to head off as leaders in uh, college athletics is our fan base. And there's nothing better than that. I think uh, those, those games are, are – the more times you play conference opponents, I, th I think it's a great situation. I think the fear is um, hurting yourself, uh, eating your own, as I would say, in terms of playoffs and things like that. So if the expansion of the playoff continues to be conversation, then playing more conference games is going to increase our strength of schedule. Coach, to your left, second row. Hey, Coach, Georgia Chambers. So you touched on this. JT going into last season was reco recovering from a torn ACL. So what was key in his recovery process, and how have you seen him develop as an SEC quarterback? Biggest, uh, he had a cleanup on his ACL when he before he came to us, and then he had to go in and get some scar tissue taken out, I think, you know, during the summer as he was rehabbing. But Ron Corson will tell you our medical uh kind of expert he he said I've never seen someone beat me here for treatment every morning and he's here ready to go bright and early and uh, just a very diligent young man that worked really hard on his rehab because he wants to play football for a long time uh, he's very detailed in his uh, dedication to, to rehab and he did a tremendous job and I uh, think he's in a better position this year coach to your left second row Hey, Kirby, uh, you've known Quavo. How did you meet Quavo, and what's your favorite Migos song? I, could, I, I didn't hear that. You said, where did I meet him? How did you, how did you meet him? Uh, I was talking about it out there. It, it started around the playoff run we had, and um, I don't know if it was – I think it was the SEC championship game. might have been the first time he joined us on the sideline when we beat Auburn, and then uh, he, he joined us out at the Rose Bowl, and then he was – I believe on the sideline. I'm not sure if he was or not for the national championship game, um, but he's been a part. He's come and spoke to our players before. Um, he, he does a good job uh, talking to our players because I don't 
I think our players respect and listen uh, to Quavo, and they understand. And he, he loves football. People don't understand. He was a high school football player and embraced football. Think, you know, he wants to be a quarterback. And um, he goes to a lot of events with NFL players and things. And uh, he's been a good, uh, when it comes to giving advice to our players, they listen. And uh, he had some good advice for him in NIL. Coach, to your right, second row. Coach, um, you know, last year was you know, probably the first time that most of the players on that roster had not played for an SEC title. With, with the amount of success that they've just become accustomed to, was that enough motivation to get right back at a, you know, playing for another title this year? Yeah, I think that plays a factor. I, I certainly don't think it's the, the most important factor. We, we, we motivate through intrinsic factors, and just the fact that we didn't win the East and didn't get an opportunity to play for it, that sticks with all of us. And uh, we know we've got enough talent to get that done. And um, any opportunity you get to go compete, it doesn't matter who it's against, where it is, or when it is, you want to be at your best. And our guys are driven to do that. So I know that getting back to the SEC championship is one of the steps that uh, you get to, you got to step to, to, to be able to make the playoffs. Coach, to your left on the third row. Hey, Coach, Matt Trent, WBRZ in Baton Rouge. Uh, it seems like Eric Gilbert committed to half the SEC before he landed in Athens after leaving LSU. Can you just talk about the process from the time he left LSU and, and how he is now in Athens? Yeah, there, there wasn't a lot of, uh, of communication there. There was a time where, you know, he – he was back home training, working out. He was in the portal, but nobody really knew what he was going to do. There was a thought that he may go back to LSU. Obviously, there was a time where he was committed to Florida, but um, I never spent a lot of time worrying about it. You know, we worry about the players that we get and the, not the ones we don't. Um, I learned a long time ago that I can't control the decisions of, of 18, 19 year olds. So we just told him he has an opportunity here. If he's interested, let us know. And uh, it wasn't a constant pursuit and uh, not something that we consumed ourselves with. To your right, second row. Hey, Coach. Jamal St. Cyr, News for Jax. Uh, Carson Beck's heading into his second year with your program. What sort of progression have you seen from him, and uh, do you think he's making progress? Yeah, I do. I'm excited about Carson Beck's future. He's a very bright young man. He's uh, done the right things off the field in terms of classroom and doing what he's supposed to do. He's improved in that area. Uh, he's talented. He's really got good composure. You know, he's a guy that can stand in the pocket with confidence and make throws. Um, he's a really good baseball player in high school that I don't think people give him enough credit athletically. But uh, very intelligent, great family, and I I'm looking forward to seeing him grow. Coach, to your left, fourth row. Hey, Coach Rex Castillo from WRB on Columbus, Georgia. Just a question with, uh, with Stokes and LeCount leaving for the NFL draft. That's a lot of, talent, a lot of veteran leadership to, to replace in, in the backfield there for the defense. Who do you expect to step up for you? Well, we're going to do it by committee. We're going to find that out in fall camp. You know, we've got uh, two young men that come to us by way of portal. Uh, then we've got a, a group of guys on our current roster that are talented and we're highly recruited players that we think are going to be able to help us. So when Tyson and Stokes took over, we had just lost players. And uh, when they leave, we're going to have to find new players. It's part of uh, the, the offseason and part of the recruiting process to figure out who's going to help us in those areas. And we've got capable players in the secondary. We don't have the depth that we are used to. We will need to avoid injury uh, in that area. Coach, to your right on the third row. Coach Mike Lucas, KX TV down in College Station. When you look around the entire SEC, is this about as high of quality of quarterbacks have you've seen since you've been around the league? You know, that's a hard judgment. I've been in this league for 20 years off and on, and there's been some really, really stellar years at quarterback. I can't quote right now what years were better than others, but between Cam Newton, Johnny Manziel, and all the great guys that I've had to face as a defensive coordinator in this conference, there's been a lot of really good years. Um, I think what's happened is the – passing has become more prolific at a younger age, at the high school age, and, and the seven on seven. So you're, you're, you're facing guys that are more experienced uh, throwing the ball. And each year is different in terms of how many guys are returning. Stay on your right, fourth row. Tom Murphy, ADG. You faced Sam Pittman in his major college coaching debut, the season opener last year. Wonder what you thought coming out of that game in terms of their preparation. You got him again this year. What do you expect of his progress? Got a lot of respect for Sam as a person, a coach, a man. Did a tremendous job against us uh, last year. They've got a, an unbelievable staff. He's got a, a, a really uh, almost a, a, a perfect recipe between his defensive coordinator and his offensive coordinator, who he entrusts a lot in. They. Uh, 
they, they both are different, but they're both really do a good job of their respective jobs. I have a lot of respect uh, for Barry and uh, his years at Missouri. We got to be close. So he, he, he plays a, a very difficult defensive scheme to attack. And uh, I think they've got a lot of players coming back. Somebody told me I think they have more seniors than anybody else in the conference, which when you have a lot of seniors, you look at the track record, those are the teams that are most successful. Two final questions. We'll stay on the left third row. Allison Mastrangelo, WSB. There's already a lot of attention on this first game of the season with Clemson, two talented teams going up against each other. Do you think that the first game can really set the tone for the season? And how are you telling your guys to kind of block out the noise? Jordan said that he's already deleted social media to kind of just be focused on this season. Yeah, I think the the first game can can be what you want it to be. You can use it as a springboard. You can learn use it as a learning experience. You know, the outcome is probably going to dictate how you use that game. But neither team um, will will be in the playoffs or out of the playoffs based on the outcome of the game. It's a lot more important what you do and how you manage the success from that game or the failure from that game. And you really, we try to look at it from what did we do well and what did we do poorly, regardless of the outcome. Like the scoreboard only matters to you guys. For us, it's gonna be if we play really well and do good things, how can we improve? If we don't, what area can we improve on? We're very uh, technical about the next step, not emotional that it's over or it's won. Final question on your left, third row. Coach Murray Martin, 11 Alive in Atlanta. Uh, you talk about JT, the focus for him has been more on the physical aspect and less on the mental, but what's been the most impressive thing to you about his football IQ as the leader now for your offense? His ability to retain information. I think when you sit in a meeting and someone discusses something, especially with uh, the generation of young men we're dealing with now in terms of being on their phones, needing constant uh, change, and you know they can't watch a video for more than 30 seconds without moving on to the next thing. JT has unbelievable retention. He can stay in a meeting, he can take notes, he can get us question the next day or three days later, uh, the situation reappears. He knows the answer from what he learned in the meeting. So when you have someone like that, now you need physical tools, but when you have the mental tools to be able to do that, he's able to draw on those experience and learn in the meeting room which is it's a big part of being a quarterback.